Hi, yes, seven. Hope you're okay. Um, so I'm here today to take you through the opening part of your new topic, which is children of conflict. What you will need as you're taking yourself through this lesson is access to a piece of paper, a pen, um, any coloured felt tips or colouring pencil crayons would also be of use. Um, if you can't access those, then if you can open yourself on your computer, um, the relevant software that will allow you to write down some ideas on there. So I want you to do yourself a topic title, which is children of conflict. Um, around that, I then want you to move on to using the images that you can see in front of you. And I want you to start to think about um, just mapping out some ideas that are linked to our new topic. So what links, what ideas are generated based on the images that you can see? Is children a conflict linked to one time period or can you see a range of time periods in front of you? And then I want you to start to think about any deeper meanings that you can find. You might even recognise one of the people in the images as well. Okay. Um, at several points where activities are introduced, you may wish to pause the video so that you've got time to have a go at your activity before moving on to the next one. Okay, so once you've done that then, around your ideas, your initial ideas that you've mapped out, you need to add to your page the key vocabulary for your new unit. You guys will be completely used to this by now. You're introduced to new vocabulary every single um, new topic. I need you to make sure that you understand what each of those words mean because you're going to need to be able to use them to respond to some of the tasks both in this activity and also in the extra activities that your teacher may be setting you. So if there's any words on the screen that you're not too sure of, please use the dictionary or an online dictionary via your computer to look up any words that you don't know and write those meanings down. Okay, let's have a bit of a closer look then, uh, just at a couple of our key terms. So we're going to start off with the word conflict, okay? I want you to start to think about the associations that you make with the word conflict. Maybe there's feelings, maybe there's emotions, um, maybe there's certain situations that you can think of that you associate with the word, word conflict. Again, you might wish to map these ideas out, you might wish to discuss them with somebody in your home who's supporting your learning, or you might use, wish to use this time uh, to think about that term. So some possible ideas are going to appear on your screen now. Um, arguments, then, they're quite um, a key thing that are linked to conflict, arguments between people. Um, fighting, injury, injury that can sometimes, unfortunately, lead to death. Then we move on to thinking about um, the impact it has emotionally, so the misery and unhappiness that it can cause to people. Suffering. Um, and then also time. Conflict can last for short periods of time, um, right the way through to prolonged periods of time. Uh, we can think of perhaps instances in the past where conflict has gone on for a number of years. Now let's focus on the word children. So um, we're all familiar with the term children, but I want us to think about what we associate generally with children uh, when you've looked at reading texts and you've looked at symbolism in the past. Think about what children are um, generally used to symbolise or associated with. So again, I want you to spend a little bit of time. You might want to pause the video at this point just to think about that term and what you associate with it. So on the screen, as before, you've got some possible ideas. Um, children are often used to symbolise innocence in texts or in films. Um, they symbolise hope for the future um, and future ideas. It's a time period that we all go through. Um, and they're also used to um, associate with having fun as well. So well done on those ideas that you've come up with. What I want us to do that now then is to put those two terms back together and think about children that are living in conflict. I want you to imagine 
um, a child that's right in the middle of um, a conflict zone and make a list of everything that a child would lose if their country was bombed or at war and if they suddenly found themselves as refugees okay so make a list of anything that you think a child would lose if they were in that situation Again, just some possible ideas to help you so they would lose their home, most likely. They might lose family or loved ones. Belongings, because they can't take them with them or they've been destroyed in bombing. Then they lose their reassurance, that stability of having the same home and environment to return to. They lose those feelings that they once had of safety and protection within their environment. One of the things that they also might miss out on is regular schooling or um, chances to be part of an educational setting. Okay, so I want to introduce you to the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. You can see it's also abbreviated in the brackets there. It is legally binding and it's to do with setting out key ideas that are linked to the rights of every child. Okay, and I'm going to give you some of those key principles now. So, all children under the um, age of 18 are covered by these rights and governments and adults should work to protect these rights. So, it outlines some of the things that children have rights to and I'm not going to read all of those to you, I'll allow you to read them, but some that I want to point out is that children have the right to be cared for, to have access to clean water and food and healthy environments. They have a right to an education and to be protected from different things, okay? There's a little activity that you can see there on your screen um, where you might want to have a go at ordering those in um, from the least crucial to the most crucial principles that you think children need access to in their lives. Okay then, uh, let's move on to um, an activity. So we're going to practice some of our writing skills. This has um, a key link to your GCSE skills that your teacher probably has introduced to you by now. Um, so as part of your GCSE, you might be given an image that you are asked to create a piece of writing, maybe descriptive or narrative based on. So that's the activity that we're going to do now. You can see you've got an image in front of you. And I want you to start to practice planning and mapping out some ideas, okay? So using this image, using your creativity, what do you think the age of the children is um, in, in the image? Where might they be? What do you think that they like or dislike? Do they have any family? So can you spend about five minutes coming up with a backstory, some possible mapped out ideas for the children in the images? So on the screen, you've got some possible ideas, just if you're struggling to come up with those that you might want to read through. Children that are um, living in refugee camps might find that they have to walk for several hours each day um, to fetch clean water. You can see that they've got a container in the image um, that's used to collect the water um, after they're living there because homes have been destroyed or they have to, uh, they've had to flee their homes. Um, young girls would probably have to help out with the cooking and cleaning and the ironing. Um, possibly boys too, but mainly young girls perhaps. Um, they might be living in quite cramped conditions uh, and they might find that they've lost key members of their family. So your task then is to have a go at writing a descriptive paragraph um, from the perspective of one of the children on the image. So you've got a model that's been written in front of you and I actually want you to extend it from a paragraph to an extended piece of writing. So the model says, the sweltering sun scorched the ground below my weary feet. There hadn't been a droplet of rain for weeks. 
trudging for miles across the barren land and then you can continue that okay i'll put some key ideas then so there's some key structural ideas for developing your writing what you could include in your um upcoming paragraphs two three and four um don't forget you'll have been introduced to flashbacks in lessons um so it's when you um create a paragraph that flashes back to a memory or an event that happened before the situation that they're in now zooming in is to focus really really closely on something so i've put there a treasured item maybe it's a brooch maybe it's something that belonged to a loved one something that was really important to you and then the last paragraph uh, you um, just as a possible suggestion you might want to then start to um, look around you describe some of the people that you see um, some of their facial expressions um, just to give people a real um, clear sense of the situation that the children are in. I've also included some sentence of vocabulary support and as you're used to you've actually got a challenge box and a challenge activity there that you can have a go at um, to do with um, weather and symbolism. I've actually put in paragraph three for developing your writing um, the idea of using a butterfly for, um, symbolically so you might want to use that idea as well um, to support your challenge. This task should take um, approximately 30 minutes. You might want to spend um, a little bit longer on this as well. I know lots of you are really, really keen to have a look at um, grades and what skills you need to do to improve. And I've just put some really, really short grade descriptors on there that you might wish to use, perhaps to self assess your work or as guidance. Um, so if you're aiming for between a grade three and four, it needs to be clear. Your writing needs to be controlled in terms of grammatical features. So you've got to make sure you've got range of punctuation. Your sentences make sense. You've got crafted vocabulary, so you can use your uh, list of vocab from the starter um, activity too. Um, if you want to have a look at the rest of the grade descriptors, they're there for you to for you below. And then finally, um, the last task that I want to introduce to you is your creative task. So I want you to have a go at designing a campaign that's aimed at encouraging people in society to support and help to support children of conflict. If you do have access to the internet and a computer, then obviously you can have a look at researching some of those organisations that are already available to give you a starting point. I've then put a selection of different activities that you might want to be involved in, from creating a storyboard, um, creating a poster or leaflet, to creating a um, and designing a pin badge that could be used to raise money for charities. Okay then guys, um, I hope you enjoy these activities, stay safe and um, speak to you guys again soon.